Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yes. A 30 year old male with no previous comorbidities present to the ER with complaints of uh, acute onset backache and abdominal discomfort since two days. Uh, coming to initial 10 second assessment, airway was patent, no secretions, breathing air entry bilaterally equal, respiratory rate of 16 per minute, saturation of 97% in room air. Coming to circulation, BP of 120 bar 80 millimeters of mercury, pulse rate of 88 per minute. Disability GCS of E4, V5, M6, pupil 2.5 mm equally and bilateral reacting to light. Exposure temperature 97.0 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, at this point of time, we have sent the routine blood investigations and come to the ample history. A 30 year old male with no previous comorbidities present to the ER with complaints of backache and abdominal discomfort since two days. The patient gives a history of uh, exertional exercises two days back, following which he developed uh, bilateral uh, joint pain both upper limb and lower limb and acute backache, for which he taken one tablet of diclofenac, following which he developed abdominal discomfort and nausea. Uh, no history of any hematuria, decreased urine output, edema, itching, facial puffiness, breathlessness, chest pain. Uh, no history of any allergies. No history of similar episodes in the past. Uh, the last meal was taken at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, coming to general examination, no pallor, no ictus, no sinuses, clubbing, generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema. Systemic examination, abdomen, soft, tender, uh, bowel sounds were present. Other systems were within normal limits. At this point of time, our routine blood investigations came, which showed a serum creatinine of 2.5 with a urea of 30. Other blood investigations included the total uh, creatinine kinase, which was 500. Other uh, investigations were within normal limits. Uh, uh, URE was done, it was normal, yeah. sir. Uh, so, at this point of time, uh, we take it as an acute kidney injury under evaluation with uh, drug-induced gastritis. Uh, so, we evaluated the acute kidney injury. The previous creatinine of the patient was 0.8, which was one year back. Uh, we have taken initially uh, a UST abdomen and the corticomedullary differentiation was maintained, pointing towards an acute kidney injury. Uh, How do you differentiate acute kidney injury from a chronic kidney injury on acute? Sorry, acute on chronic. What are the differentiating points for an ER physician to know whether it's an acute problem or whether it's a pre-existing condition, kidney injury is pre-existing? Uh, sir, one is from the baseline creatinine to the creatinine, we don't know. So, yes. Suppose you get it, uh, it's okay, mm -hmm. well and good. But suppose we don't know. If it is available, you can compare with that. If it is not available? Uh, one is UST. UST corticomedullary differentiation. Then electrolyte imbalance and hyperkalemia, which point towards? Hyperkalemia can occur in both. Yeah. What is the difference in hyperkalemia of acute kidney injury and chronic kidney injury? Uh, in acute uh, kidney injury, the patient's uh, body is not acclimatized. Okay. There so, some chronic kidney so there injury. will be clinical finding according uh, according to the level, levels, yeah. whatever given in books. You see it in better in acute kidney okay. injury. Whereas in chronic, even if it is slightly higher, you may not see any clinical finding okay. like ECG changes. May not be there. Okay. So, that is the second thing. Okay. And another associated symptoms, urine analysis in chronic urine, kidney injury. Urine may show uh, pustules. Mm, uh, cast can be seen. Cast will be there in both. Other electrolytes in phosphorus, calcium. Can see calcium will be low and phosphorus can be high in chronic okay. renal failure. Acute, it may not be there. Then HB can be hemoglobin. Uh, albumin can be low. Hemoglobin will be low in uh, chronic, chronic kidney disease. Yeah. Acute, it may be normal. Albumin may be no, low in chronic. Chronic, but uh, chronic. that cannot be t uh, like it may not be correct because acute nephrotic syndrome albumin will be severely depleted. So that may not be a good sign. Okay. So these are the common findings which can clinically differentiate acute from chronic. Then skin changes are there. Hair changes are there. Edema, so many things, uh, clinical findings also will be there in chronic kidney injury. Uh, so, initially we have did a UST abdomen uh, which may showed maintained corticomedullary differentiation. Uh, urine analysis was also done and it was also normal. The urea was 30 and the creatine was 2.5. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we, and total uh, CK was uh, 500. So is it in kidney damage or pre-renal failure? Uh, the um, creatine uh, ratio is maintained, urea yeah. creatine ratio is maintained. So, so, whenever there is kidney damage, that producing renal failure, that is uh, the urea creatine ratio will be 1 is to 20 or 1 is maximum 1 is to 40. Mm -hmm. Whereas in uh, pre-renal failure, it will be very high. 
maybe 1 is to 80 or 1 is to 160 like that it will be very high uh, since the creatinine urea ratio was maintained uh, we ruled out pre renal ak okay and uh, most of uh, can be a drug induced ak okay uh, so drug induced ak can also be it can either be acute tubular necrosis or acute interstitial nephritis okay. uh, but the patient gave history of only one tablet of injection of uh, diclofenac what is uh, idiosyncratic reaction uh, it is what no, is dose dependent reaction uh, idiosyncratic reaction means when the exposure to a minimum amount of uh, dosage can lead to the okay. hypersensitive reaction problem. Uh, do, dose dependent, uh, the toxicity depends upon the level of. Tell me some examples for that. Uh, in, uh, coming to the drug induced kidney injury, mm -hmm. uh, according to the mechanism of renal acute tubular necrosis, the drugs cause. Uh, that we will uh, discuss. I am so only asking. There are some drugs, idiosyncratic reactions mm -hmm. are common. The same drug itself, dose dependent mm -hmm. reaction. NSAIDs also. can. So, one of the common dose dependent problem what we will face in ICU is aminoglycoside induced kidney, kidney injury. Kidney. So when you give cumulative doses, multiple doses, slowly you can see the uh, kidney failure. Whereas here, diclofenac single drug is enough. Mm. Okay, so that is main difference. One drug is producing renal failure. That any drug can produce, not only diclofenac. Almost all drugs can produce renal failure in selected patients. Whereas other one dose dependent is very clearly defined. There are some drugs which can produce renal damage. One of the drug is aminoglycoside. A lot of anti-cancer drugs also can produce such problem. Uh, so, we take it as a renal injury. So, it can be either acute tubular necrosis or acute interstitial nephritis or okay. intratubular obstruction. Okay. But uh, both, both in intratubular obstruction and uh, necrosis are dose dependent mm -hmm. and dose independent is acute interstitial nephritis. Okay. This is the first time we use having exposure to diclofenac. With single dose, we taken it as acute interstitial nephritis. Okay. Initially, we started the patient, uh, we removed the drugs, uh, we given the patient uh, tramadol instead of uh, diclofenac uh, for pain management. Then, we initially started on IV fluids and other supportive measures. Right. Uh, next day, creatine came to 4. Uh, so, in view of this, uh, we started the patient on uh, steroids, okay. which is the mainstay of treatment in acute interstitial nephritis. Mm. We started the patient on methyl prednisolone on 20 mg IV. Mm. And the next day, creatine shoot down, uh, shoot down to uh, 1.5. Mm. Uh, reduced. Uh, reduced. Uh, okay. Indicating towards uh, acute interstitial nephritis problem. Okay. Then after three days of IV steroids, we switch to oral steroids as there can be residual inflammation in the case of acute interstitial nephritis and okay. we gradually taper and we uh, reviewed the patient last week and the creatine came down to... Uric increase. acid, what is the uric acid? Uh, uric acid in this patient was 7.7, 7, sir. Okay. So that also may add to the kidney injury or kidney injury can produce uh, uric acid. Yes. Normally, chronic renal failure produces elevated uric acid, clearance is uh, reduced. Whereas in acute kidney injury, some of the sometimes the uric acid itself can create a problem in the kidney. So that also we should keep in mind. There the treatment is give more water okay. fluid and remove it or start drugs which can reduce the uric acid levels. That can be done. Okay. So what are the uh, classification of acute renal failure? Uh, so acute uh, renal failure can be classified as pre-renal, renal and post-renal. Hmm. Pre-renal, the mechanisms can be decreased intravascular depletion mm -hmm. uh, that is due to dehydration, hemorrhage or shock. Uh, the decreased effective intravascular volume. Common scenario in emergency room, what produces acute renal failure? Pre-renal, acute renal failure. Common scenario. Uh, Pre-renal, most commonly dehydration, Dehy hypertension. Diarrhea, mm -hmm. vomiting, mm -hmm. sepsis. Uh, all these conditions where there is vasodilatation or vascular volume loss can lead to renal failure. What is the treatment of that? Uh, support with fluids. So, okay. give fluids, it will improve. Okay. Uh, then, renal failure, uh, it can be acute tubular necrosis or interstitial nephritis. Okay. Necrosis can be ischemic or toxins induced. Okay. Both endotoxin and exotoxins like hemoglobin, myoglobin can produce okay. uric acid nephropathy, contrast induced nephropathy all comes in that. Okay. Interstitial nephritis, again, drugs can cause infections, can cause infiltrative diseases uh, like lymphoma, sarcoidosis, all can cause. Uh, then coming to sp specifically to drug induced uh, injury, again. Most of these conditions, is steroid may be helpful yeah, because it so. can reduce the inflammation. Okay. And coming to drug induced injury, uh, there are four mechanisms. One is pre renal AK, where there is inhibition of the prostaglandins, leading to uh, inhibition of peripheral uh, afferent arterial vasodilatation. Okay. Uh, drugs like NSAIDs, cyclosporins can cause pre renal AK, diuretics can cause pre renal AK. 
then second mechanism is coming to renal there is acute tubular necrosis can be there coming to acute tubular necrosis most common drugs like uh, vancomycin aminoglycosides uh, pentamidine etc mm. can cause acute tubular necrosis acute interstitial nephritis is dose independent mm. in that uh, comes the nsaids again uh, beta lactam antibiotics allopurinol can be the rifampicin can be the then a fourth mechanism acute intratubular obstruction uh, that is also dose dependent in that contains acyclovir triamderin uh, methotrexate can be the acyclovir infusion you give for many patients with uh, uh, what is it uh, herpes how do you give what are the precautions you take you uh, give acyclovir infusion no? sir um, we ask the patient to monitor lft uh, gastritis can be another problem no, kidney kidney injury is common in uh, acyclovir infusion we have to give more more fluids whenever we get, we are giving acyclovir you have to monitor the potassium creatinine and you have to give more fluids otherwise it can precipitate in the kidney and sometimes it can produce renal damage not very common so since we are using these drugs very often we have to know that okay first renal causes uh, obstruction sir what uh, are the common causes you are, you are seeing in your practice uh, calculi causing infection and again calculi uh, pyelonephritis infections of the one is infection then is the most uh, common cause we treat every day one is pyelonephritis that is very common cause any other major obstructions we are seeing uh, stone stone and urethral vein prostate po- posterior urethral vein posterior urethral valve uh, children no uh, uh, not in adult okay children okay prostate mm-hmm. Prostate is one of the common problems. We are not seeing because most of these cases may go to directly to urology because that is the most common thing in elderly individual which produces urinary obstruction and this back pressure can sometimes produce renal failure. What we are seeing commonly is uh, acute pyelonephritis uh, and uh, obstructive uropathy because of the inflammation. Okay. That produces commonly. Okay. Any other things you want to tell? Uh, sir acute kidney injury is defined as an abrupt uh, decrease in the renal function over hours to days resulting in hyperkalemia acidosis ECA volume expansion uremia uh, come the classification kidigo classification based on the urine output and the serum creatinine mm-hmm. uh, stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 will be there uh, then differentiating between the three problem is, for all these things is uh, obstructive uropathy uh, this will go out to a very high level because uh, completely obstruction will be there whereas other types of uh, nephropathies your output may be maintained you may you will be seeing patients good urine output will be there but obstructive urine uropathy completely your output will be reduced but creatinine will be you can see that it is started rising uh, then differentiating between the pre renal and uh, renal injuries your output will be initially normal in pre renal decreased in uh, renal injuries uh, the bun creatinine ratio uh, the urine creatinine will be elevated in uh, pre renal decreased in uh, renal injuries whereas uh, fractional excretion of sodium is less than 1% which is the gold standard for differentiating it will be less than 1% in pre renal uh, whereas it more than 2% in uh, renal injuries uh, uri will be almost normal in the case of pre renal but uh, urine osmolality will be decreased urine specific gravity can be decreased and urine pH is slightly increased in the case of renal injuries okay. management again depends upon fluids to be what given is in gel, gel. Uh, new uh, is not new it is uh, i think it is maybe 2 3 years it is there uh, better uh, better marker for uh, renal injuries than creatinine creatinine usually elevates 24 to 48 hours after the injury okay. and gel and other kim one uh, such markers are early Newer detection markers, so they, they they have better predictive, predictive value, value in risk yeah. due to some reason they are coming not coming to market maybe they are not very sensitive or some other problem will be there so. okay thank you Thanks.